Dr. Ken Landau. Let's talk about Humira. Humira is a drug known as biologic. It's for treatment of moderate to severe psoriasis and some other kind of conditions as well. It's advertised all the time on the television. You can't go an hour of watching TV without seeing at least one ad for an anti-psoriasis medication because the medications are so profitable and so expensive. We know that Humira was first approved by the Food and Drug Administration in 2002 for treating rheumatoid arthritis then it gained marketing approval in 2005 for treating psoriatic arthritis and 2008 for treating psoriasis and then in 2015 for treating a condition known as hydradenitis suppurativa. It's an acting-like condition that occurs under the arms, under the breasts, and in the groin. Now, this was the biggest seller in the entire world in 2012. 60% of the profits 60% of the sales of AbbVie, the pharmaceutical company that makes it, come from this one particular drug. The word Humira is actually an anagram. It really stands for human monoclonal antibody in rheumatoid arthritis. Unfortunately, biologic drugs are very expensive and they're increasing the prices. The companies are increasing the prices for reasons that don't seem to make any sense. As the sales go down, the price goes up. The drugs seem to be less effective over a long period of time, and we're still recognizing some unusual but very serious side effects from taking these drugs. They've changed the definition over a period of time of moderate to severe psoriasis, so it used to mean that more than 10% of your body surface area was involved with psoriasis, but now it's drifted down to, well, at least 3 to 5% of your body surface area. That means that about 1.5 million people are potential candidates. Now, you take the drug by injecting it underneath the surface of your skin, kind of like you do with insulin. You take a loading dose of two shots, and then every other week you take one shot. Well, it's an immune suppressant. It works against a chemical known as TNF, or tumor necrosis factor. We know that if you look at the effectiveness, after 12 weeks of taking the drug in randomized studies, about 75% of the people receive at least 75% improvement. Now, that's pretty dramatic. And as a matter of fact, 50% of the people are almost completely clear, and 20% of the people are clear after 12 weeks. That's in the studies. In the real world, it's probably total of clear and almost completely clear, less than 50%. And the effectiveness also seems to decrease over a period of time. Now, there is some difficulty with suppressing your immune system. If you suppress the immune system, then you might make yourself susceptible to infection. Infection like tuberculosis, viral infection, bacterial infection, fungal infection. And it can increase the risk of developing lymph cancers and other cancers as well, especially in children. The incidence of skin cancers goes up. And if you happen to have hepatitis B, you're going to be in trouble and you can't get vaccinated while you're taking this medicine, especially with the live vaccine. Now, it was originally developed by Knoll Pharmaceuticals, and Knoll Pharmaceuticals sold their entire gamut of medicines to AbbVie in 2001. All of the drugs together cost $7 billion, and I just want you to realize that sales of Humira alone in 2011 were $24 billion. They bought the drug and a bunch of other drugs for $7 billion, and just this one drug had sales of $24 billion, and they still see need to increase the cost of the drug. It goes off patent in 2016. Now, if you buy a pen of this, if you pay the cash price, if you go to goodrx.com, you'll see that 40 milligrams of this drug that you have to take every other week costs about $2,000, and that means over the course of a year, the cash price is going to be in excess of $50,000. That's a lot of money, but Cosentix, another drug that you see advertised all the time on the television, costs well in excess of $60,000 cash price. If you take Otesla, again, you see that advertised all the time on the television, that's going to cost about $36,000 cash price per year. Now, they have another drug that's been on the market for a long time. They don't advertise it. It's dirt cheap. It's very good. It's called methotrexate. Methotrexate for a year costs less than $400. That means it's about 1% of the cost of taking Otesla, and it's about half of 1% of the cost of taking Humira or the Cosentex, and still works very well. Well, it's estimated that the sales of Humira 
in 2016 are going to be somewhere around $11 billion. And if we look at the sales overall, say from 2013 to 2017, the sales are going to be around $58 billion. So of the $14 billion in sales last year, $8 billion was here in the United States and about $6 billion was worldwide overall. The company's sales are in excess of $20 billion. The gross, the, uh, gross, uh, adjusted gross uh, margin is going to be more than 80%. And what the companies do is they increase the cost of the drug as the volume of sales decreases. More drugs come on the market, more competition. Well, as an example, there's a drug called Enbro. Enbro in 1998 cost around $10,000. It now costs about $40,000. Inflation counts for a relatively small amount. Now, we know that some of these companies have what they call savings cards. So it costs you, the consumer, a very small amount, $5, $10, $15, $20 for a vial. It costs the insurance company an awful lot of money. If you get the medicine and you don't need the medicine, and one of the cheaper drugs will do, then what's going to happen to your insurance policy over a period of time? Well, the premium is going to go up. Well, in the real world, if we had a drug, then after a period of time when the patent goes off, then we have generics that are available. Well, in the case of biologics, there isn't really the equivalent, but they call drugs that are quite similar to the drugs, they call them biosimilars. Well, there's an Indian pharmaceutical company that makes a drug called Exemptia, and Exemptia, made by Cadella, only costs $200 a vial, not $2,000 a vial. Major savings. That if that one will get to the United States, but it's estimated that some of these biologics, or the biosimilars, the biosimilars, are going to cost maybe 70% of the name brand products. Well, interestingly, there's a company called Amgen. Amgen's a major pharmaceutical company, and they have a drug that they're trying to get out as a biosimilar to Humira. It was going to go before the Food and Drug Administration this year, 2016. They anticipated an authorization by September, and they thought they were going to be able to sell it in 2017. But now there's major cloud on the horizon because the Patent and Trademark Office, in a lawsuit between Amgen and AbbVie, sided with AbbVie and said, hey, no, the patents are okay, so this drug probably isn't going to be on the market until around 2022 at the present time. Well, there are a lot of other biosimilars coming on the market. There's one by Bexalta, another by Novartis, another by Merck, and all of these drugs hopefully are going to bring down the price somewhat. But at least so far, all of the drugs on the market are horribly expensive. And the question is, should you start on one of these highly advertised products? Or maybe it's more appropriate to start with some of the old-fashioned drugs, some of the drugs that we know all about the side effects because they've been on the market for 30, 40, 50 years. And these drugs that I'm talking about, like methotrexate, are dirt cheap. You take them by mouth, no shots, got to get some blood tests every once in a while. But so what? You save a heck of a lot of money and you know what the side effects are. Anyway, something for you to think about. I'm Dr. Ken Landau.